Diagnostic Knee Arthroscopy. We will be discussing the basics of knee arthroscopy. Always start by examination under anesthesia. The Lachman test for anterior cruciate ligament injury. Posterior drawer for PCL injuries, neutral position, anterior drawer. So this patient has a bicruciate injury. You have to realize where the neutral point is. And then a valgus stress in extension and in 30 degrees of flexion with an additional MCL injury. And finally, the LCL looks okay. So verify the diagnosis with examination under anesthesia before starting the scope. Regarding the patient positioning, either we use a post or a support on the lateral aspect of the thigh to help us put the knee in a valgus position to be able to visualize the medial compartment, like in the left picture, or we can use a leg holder, a thigh support to, uh, to, uh, to, to hold the thigh so that we can apply posterior portals, like in the right picture. Regarding the surface markings, we, we marked the patella, the quadriceps tendon, the patellar tendon. The standard visualization anterolateral portal is marked one centimeter distal to the distal pole of the patella and just lateral to the lateral edge of the patellar tendon. And on the opposite side is the anteromedial portal, which is the standard working portal. It's better to make it two to three millimeters distal to the anterolateral portal, and then more medially and distally just above the tibial plateau is the accessory medial portal, which we use for transportal drilling of the femoral tunnel in cases of anatomic ACL reconstruction. The used lens is a 30 degrees lens, so the lens is not looking straight ahead like a zero degree lens used in laparoscopy, for example, but it's a 30 degrees lens looking under by 30 degrees. So you're actually your field is below where the lens is looking. And therefore, if you want to change the field by rotating the lens and light cable, so if you want to look up, then you rotate the lens and light cable down and vice versa. So how to rotate the lens? Like in the last video, please fix the camera with the buttons up and use the light cable to rotate the lens. And don't do like in the right video where you rotate the camera itself. Yes, this will change your field, but then you will not be oriented. You don't know where you're looking. But if the camera is fixed and you're rotating the light cable, you know that you are looking in the opposite direction of your light cable. This is the sheath and blunt operator. They have markings. Once you get them along each other, you lock and always enter the joint with the blunt operator inside the sheath. And once you're inside the joint, take the blunt operator out and put the lens instead. Don't use the lens inside the sheath to go inside the joint because then you can injure the lens. We use a number 11 knife with the blade looking upwards not to injure the meniscus. And for the standard anterolateral portal, you go in the direction of the notch with your step, of the intercondylar notch. So by twisting movements, you go in the direction of the notch with the sheath, or you take it under the patella, take it a little bit out, and then slide it to the medial compartments. So there are two ways to get inside the knee using the sheath. Once you've done this, take the blunt obturator out and put the lens in. These are the connections, the lens with the camera, the light source, the irrigation fluid from one side and the suction tube from the other side. Hold it securely like we see in the right picture so you can easily control it and you can rotate the light cable to change your field. So this is a right knee. The stab incision with the number 11 knife with the blade looking upwards and the sheath is going in the direction of the intercondylar notch. So what do we need to see? We need to see the medial compartment and meniscus, the lateral compartment and meniscus, the intercondylar notch and cruciates, patella and trochlea, and finally the medial and lateral gutters. Establishing the anteromedial portal under vision with the needle, we're looking from the anterolateral portal. And with the needle, you might want to make a standard anteromedial portal. You might want to do an accessory medial portal. In cases of ACR reconstruction, you can make a portal somewhere in between to work for both. But anyway, use the needle. Once you know you're in the proper place where you want to work, then you use the knife. So in the upper left video, this is the standard anteromedial portal. You can work nicely on the menisci, 
But if you want to do a transportal drilling of the femoral tunnel for an atomic ACA reconstruction, you have to go more medial and distal to be in the direction you want to do your drilling, like we can see in the, the lowermost video, for example. We've made this tab and we can see that we are going in the direction we want to, to do the femoral tunnel. The whole time, this is a right knee. We're looking now from the uh, anterolateral portal and we, from this accessory medial portal that we've made, we can really be directed to where we want to work on the lateral femoral condyle to do our tunnel. Start by clearing your field using uh, a motorized shaver, clearing on the medial side where you're entering from the anteromedial portal, and then the synovium in the, uh, in the notch area. Be careful, you, all the time you have to be aware where the, the shaver is. You can see it, you know where it's directed, so you will not injure the cartridge and you will not injure your lens. So don't do blind shaving, please. Once you've had a clear field, stop the shaving. Not too much shaving. It's just for clearing your field to have a proper visualization. Then circulation inside the knee, medial meniscus, piston out a little bit as you go in the direction of the ACL, and then as you reach the lateral compartment with your rotation, you have to put the leg in varus to open the lateral compartment, to put the knee in varus to open the lateral compartment, see the whole lateral meniscus. Doing the varus, either you can press the, the ankle and leg with your waist against the table, or you can put it in a figure of four over the table to be able to open the lateral compartment and see the whole lateral meniscus. So for probing, enter with the blunt obturator. This is the ACL. Again, this is the medial meniscus. This is the right knee as we agreed, looking from the anterolateral portal. This is the medial femoral condyle. Piston a little bit out as you go for the ACL. Once you've reached the lateral compartment, you have to put varus for the knee to be able to open the lateral compartment and see the whole lateral meniscus. This is just for palpation, but you cannot test the meniscus really with a blunt obturator. You have to pull on it. And therefore we use this hook. So this hook is for testing the menisci. This is the medial meniscus, the body of the medial meniscus. You want to see the you see the upper surface you have to go under it you want to pull on it and then you have to test the meniscal capsular junction please test it with the shoulder and not with the tip because the tip will sink in anyway but if you want to test the integrity it is with the shoulder tears are more commonly in the posterior part of the medial meniscus which we call the concealed area of the meniscus and you cannot see this unless you apply valgus load on the knee. So the valgus load is either by putting the, the leg and ankle in the opposite side of your waist to, to put a valgus stress on the knee to open it or the assistant can do the valgus so you can see the posterior part of the meniscus all the way to the root. So for inspecting and palpating in the medial meniscus, the posterior horn, you need to put valgus load on the knee, either with the leg in your waist, like in the uppermost picture on the left, or with the assistant applying the valgus. And now you can see the whole posterior horn all the way to the root, as we can see here. And here we have an associated 
ramp lesion in this case. Palpating the ACL, it's not enough to palpate the tibial attachment. You have to look at the femoral attachment because this is the most common site of tear. So rotate the light cable and lens to the opposite side to be able to see the lateral femoral condyle and see where your ACL is attached. We can see here clearly that it is posterior and inferior. It's inferior to the normal position. So it's inferior to the normal position. This means that we have an ACL tear. It's the direct fibers are torn. It's almost attached at the over the top position and maybe to the posterior capsule as well. So this is an ACL tear. We could not have seen this properly by just palpating near the tibial origin, seeing for the tone. So you have to see where it is. Now, this, where we are shaving, is the synovium covering the PCL. Usually, you have to remove a little bit of it to be able to see the posterior cruciate ligament. So this is the posterior cruciate ligament now. This is the ACL. This is the PCL. They, they make 90 degrees with each other. The PCL, of course, is coming from way back on the tibia all the way to the anterior aspect of the medial femoral condyle just below, just behind the cartilage. And we have an ACL tear because the ACL fibers are inferior to their normal position. For the lateral meniscus, we agreed that we apply valgus. We apply varus stress on the uh, on the knee, so you apply varus stress on the knee to open the lateral compartment and be able to see the lateral meniscus. This is the posterior horn. This is the tear as we can see it. We are applying the varus by pressing the, 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 the lower leg with the waist of the surgeon against the operating table. This is the popliteal hiatus where the popliteus tendon passes behind the lateral meniscus and the lateral meniscus is normally not attached at this point. So this is normal. This is the body and this is the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. So you can easily palpate the whole lateral meniscus by applying a various stress on the knee. Taking the figure of four over the table makes it even wider, the lateral compartment, and puts more various stress on the knee. So you can see the whole lateral meniscus. You can clearly see the popliteus tendon now. And you can do your palpation this way. It's easier, it's wider, but sometimes if it's a heavy leg, you need an assistant to help you put the, the leg over the table. If you're working alone, it's easier to make the various stress just by pressing the lower leg against the edge of the table. So we can see it now. We can see clearly the popliteus tendon, the lateral femoral condyle, the tibial plateau, and the whole meniscus. And then we can palpate. This is the popliteal hiatus as we agreed. This is the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This is the body of the lateral meniscus. Sometimes we need to switch portals. If we have a radial tear in the body of the median meniscus, like we're trying to, to draw the line with the blunt obturator, if you go in with a busk and you try to do a partial meniscectomy, the angle is too much. You cannot do it. You need a curve of 90 degrees to the right to be able to do a partial meniscectomy in this part. So if you want to go straight ahead for this, you need to switch portals to be looking from the antro medial and going in with your instrument from the antro lateral. But of course, if you're going for a meniscal repair, especially an outside in meniscal repair, still you will be looking from the entro lateral portal and doing your outside in sutures from the medial side. So if you switch portals, you look from the entro medial portal and you go in with your instrument from the entro lateral portal, you will have a straight access to this point and you don't need specially curved basket forceps to do your partial meniscectomy. So th this is one of the most common reasons we need 
to switch portals. Of course, we need it in, in a few other situations, but this is the most common, especially in, in a basic arthroscopy procedure. So now we have a direct access. Going for the patellofemoral joint, you go under the patella. This is the trochlea, femoral trochlea. You want to look at the patella, so take the light source and curve it. Rotate it all the way down, so up, now you can see the patella because you're looking in the opposite direction. If you want to look at the lateral retinaculum, you rotate the light cable to the opposite side. Always remember, this works if the camera is fixed with the buttons up. Don't rotate the camera to change your field. If you want to look medial, you rotate the light cable to the opposite side so you can look medial. If you want to test the patella tracking, looking at the patella with the light cable looking down and then as you bend the knee a little bit you can see how much of the patella is laterally subluxed lateral to the lateral femoral condyle and now we are going in all the way in the lateral gutter down to the lateral meniscus the lateral gutter is kind of a favorite place for loose bodies so if you're looking for a loose bodies don't forget to inspect the uh, lateral gutter and now we are inspecting the medial gutter, all the way down to the medial meniscus. So remember that the lateral gutter, this is another case of course, this is a, a case of synovial chondromatosis with multiple loose bodies and these huge loose bodies were hiding in the lateral gutter. So if you don't properly inspect the lateral gutter, you will miss loose bodies. So finally, always beware, proper portal placement, the viewing entrolateral portal, and then make your entromedial portal or portals under vision with the needle first. Inspect all compartments. Do not put any bending moments on the lens. Please do not scuff the cartilage. This is very important because the main aim of our surgery, arthroscopic knee surgery, is to preserve or treat the cartilage, so don't injure it. Do not use the shaver blindly because either you will injure the lens or the cartilage. And remember, please, diagnostic knee arthroscopy is not an indication for surgery, but it's a part of an already indicated surgery with a known diagnosis. Thank you.